Good evening, I'm Tyler Perry, and we are live in a place that is near and dear to my heart. I'm proud to say we're in my hometown, the city of New Orleans. Tonight, the most celebrated story of all times told like you have never seen it before. Welcome to The Passion. This is Waldenburg Park along the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. In fact, where I stand is not very far from the church that I grew up in as a little boy, where folks fill the air with their joyful voices. Well, tonight we'll hear many amazing voices performing hugely popular songs in fresh and surprising ways. I'm honored to be your host and storyteller tonight as the passion. <laughs> as the passion follows the final hours of the life of Jesus Christ, shared in the language of today with familiar characters transformed into our modern world. It's a story about friendship, betrayal, faith, and forgiveness, themes that speak to us all, right? Am I right about it? But ultimately, the passion is about the power of love. And now, gospel music legend, Yolanda Adams is here to kick off and give us some love right now. It's complicated, it always is. That's just the way it goes. Feels like I've waited so long for this, but I wonder if it shows. Head on the water, now I can't breathe, but I never felt so good. Ah, Cause I can feel it coming over. So why New Orleans, you ask? Well, a decade ago, this great American city was ravaged by Hurricane Katrina, leaving behind much suffering and despair. From that disaster, we learned that what happens to some of us truly belongs to all of us. But from suffering can also arise love and renewal. That's New Orleans. And also why our story is as meaningful today as it was over 2,000 years ago, maybe even more so. The passion unfolds from the Last Supper to the profound moment of Jesus' death and finally, the glory of his resurrection. With music turning every page of tonight's story. And New Orleans is certainly a city where music is anywhere and everywhere. Just lean out your windows here and there it is. So you at home, feel free to open your windows, open your heart, greet your neighbors because something special is in the air as New Orleans becomes our Jerusalem.
And I tell you, just as on that Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago, this city bustles with activity. As our story begins, Jesus enters Jerusalem accompanied by his 12 disciples. Can words actually change the world? Well, this man's words did and they still do. What was the message that inspired the disciples? Jesus knew that love truly expressed is a force so great that it can move mountains. You have to wonder if Jesus walked into this city today in 2016, would we listen to him? Or would we just want to say, hey, Jesus, can I get a selfie? <laughs> Maybe we'd avoid him, you know, thinking he's a crazy man or even a criminal. Well, tonight we're going to find out more about who Jesus is. We also have another story to share with you, and I'm just as excited about this one. Tonight there is a procession of people carrying a 20-foot illuminated cross from outside of the Superdome, and as the procession pr proceeds through the streets, the entire city, the, as it proceeds through this entire city, it will be joined by a diverse crowd of hundreds of people. Now, we all recall faces of despair at the Superdome during Hurricane Katrina. Well, tonight, we'll see faces of hope, curiosity, and faith as the procession grows traveling all the way through the French Quarter, Jackson Square, and finally here to Waldenburg Park. I tell you, all of those joining the cross are here for their own reasons, and throughout the evening, we hear their stories. But now it's time to meet the well-known characters who we will be following tonight. There's Peter, one of Jesus' best friends. Peter is a working-class fisherman from a very small village. He's determined, he's loyal, but tonight his loyalty will be deeply tested. Like all great stories, this one has a villain, and his name is Judas. Now, whether you're religious or not, I'm sure you know that name. Like Peter, he gave up everything to follow Jesus, but somewhere in his personal journey, Judas had a very dark turn of heart. Later on, we'll encounter Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. 
Like most politicians, he serves many masters. This will never be more clear than when he renders the final fate of Jesus. And of course, here is Mary, the mother of Jesus, a woman who is about to face the worst thing that can happen to any mother, the loss of her son. She was only a teenager when an, an angel told her that her child would be called the Son of God. Can you imagine? She devoted her life to Jesus, and as he grew up from being a simple carpenter into a man who performed miracles, she was there. Now Mary bolsters Jesus with the boundless depth of a mother's love. If tomorrow is judgment day And I'm standing on the front line Yes, the power of a mother's love. As we return to our story, Jesus and his disciples arrive in Jerusalem with high expectations. After three years of traveling to spread Jesus' message of a new spiritual kingdom, these disciples hope that Jesus will be received in this city as a great religious leader. However, Jesus begins preparing them, especially his close friend Peter, for what's to come, a future that they don't expect. <laughs> okay, so who do people say I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah. Still others say you're one of the prophets. What about you? What do you say I am? You're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Good for you, Peter. So I tell you, Peter, you are a rock. And on this foundation, I will build my church and not even death will be able to overcome it. Jesus is now placing the future of an everlasting church squarely on the shoulders of his friend Peter. All I can say to that is, wow. Certainly a life-changing moment for a simple fisherman. Is Peter shocked, I wondered? I wondered, was he scared? Imagine how you would feel being given such a responsibility. We do know that in his heart, Peter wants nothing more than to support his beloved teacher and friend. Hold 
hold on to me as we go As we roll down this unfamiliar road And although this way is stringing us along Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home Settle down, it'll all be clear Don't pay no mind to the demons that fill you with fear The trouble in my drag you down get lost, you can always be found. Just know you're not alone. Cause I'm gonna make this place your home. Do not tell anyone about me. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. I will be put to death. But three days later, I will be raised to life. God forbid, that must never happen to you. Get away from me. You're an obstacle in my way because these thoughts of yours do not come from God but from human nature. The disciples' heads are spinning as the man that they followed for three years is now telling them that he'll soon be gone. Jesus knew that trouble was brewing in Jerusalem, a city governed by the Roman Empire but controlled by religious power brokers who viewed Jesus' growing popularity as a threat to their authority. Our night is only going to become more dramatic as the minutes count down. And now as the illuminated cross makes its way through New Orleans, let's meet some of these folks who have traveled here to be a part of this event. Nichelle Turner is traveling with our procession tonight. Yeah. Nichelle, where are you? And tell us more of what we can expect tonight. Well, Tyler, we are in a very iconic location here in New Orleans. We're in Duncan Plaza, and we're going to be traveling about a mile and a half over to you in Woldenburg Park. It should take us about an hour and 15 minutes. This procession is going to be quite an experience, as you can see by the amount of cross bearers that are out here with us tonight. We've got very special people out here with us. The good men and women of the Salvation Army are walking with us. Also, a lot of special individuals out here walking with us tonight. And I want to introduce you to some. Actually, first of all, I know there's a gentleman that I met earlier tonight that I want you to meet. He's actually helping carry this cross out here tonight. Archer McNeil, where are you? Oh, there you are. Archer, come on over here. Uh, you are from New Orleans, from right here in New Orleans. And we heard Tyler talking earlier, Archer, about Hurricane Katrina and what it did to the city. I was here then. I know you were too, an experience I will never forget. What about for you? Um, here in Katrina, is just 
this, this symbol of the cross has been a, a symbol of triumph, mm -hmm. a symbol of hope, uh, really of overcoming. And, and we're still overcoming. Yeah. And uh, it just means so much to have it here in New Orleans and that the world's going to see it and see that we're overcoming through this through Christ. Yeah, 10 years removed from that. What does this cross symbolize to you now and, and just experiencing all of this here tonight with all of these good people? Um, this cross is, is triumph. It's, it's, it's triumph and it's a symbol of hope in the city and, and what is to come and really holding on to it uh, helps us overcome everything that we, we have been dealing with and, and just everything in, in the world today. This city has overcome a lot, still got a long way to go, but yes, we are hopeful because we do love New Orleans, right? Yes, Absolutely. Thank you, Archer. Have a great time tonight. We appreciate you being here. Now, when we return to the Passion, Jesus and his disciples meet in one of the most iconic scenes in history, The Last Supper. We'll be right back. Fishes. Thank you, and bless you. Maybe I'm crazy, but is that? Hey, it's New Orleans, baby. Anything's possible. Anything is possible here. I do hope they gave him the right change. <laughs> Even as Jesus and his disciples now head for that meal that will become known to history as the Last Supper, elsewhere in Jerusalem, the authorities are conspiring against him. And why? Well, he's called out the religious leaders for being hypocrites, for not better serving the needs of their people. What actually disturbs these religious leaders in this establishment the most, however, is that his followers even claim that he's the son of God. A firestorm is brewing because of this. Now, as their meal continues, Jesus has an important message for his followers. This bread is my body. I will die for you. Repeat this last supper and remember me. Well, I just heard the news today. It seems my life is gonna change I close my eyes begin to pray then tears of joy stream down my face with arms wide open under the sunlight welcome to this place I'll show you everything with arms wide open Yeah, with arms wide open Well, I don't know If I'm ready To be the man I have to be So I'll take a breath I'll take you by my side We stand in awe He's created life With arms wide open Under the sunlight Welcome to this place I'll show you everything With arms wide open Now everything has changed I'll show you I'll show you everything with arms wide open. This is my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it, all of you. When you drink it, do so in memory of me. Take this life 
Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. I tell you, one of you will betray me. As ominous events close in around Jesus, we return to his mother Mary. By now she is aware that her son is in great danger. She wants to remain positive. She wants to encourage him, hoping that the unconditional love he offers the world can still change things for the better. If I could tell the world just one thing, it would be we're all okay. And not to worry, cause worry is wasteful and useless in times like these. I won't be made useless I won't be idle with despair I'll gather myself around my faith For light does the darkness most fear My hands are small, I know But they're not yours, they are my own But they're not yours, they are It didn't steal your laughter And heart it came to visit me But I knew it wasn't ever after We will fight, not out of spite But someone must stand up down on my knees and I will pray I will get down on my knees and I will pray oh A mother's love, her hand forever comforting her son. When we return, Judas struggles with an unthinkable decision. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 
to New Orleans and the passion. Now, I am in a section of the city that is the most famous. Yes, indeed, we are in the French Quarter, and there is no place that people know New Orleans more than right here. Now, we have got the cross, the procession coming through right now, and on any given day, you can see processions of every kind here in this How city, doing, but usually not as impressive. How are you? Doing excellent. Oh, beautiful night in New Orleans. I know. It is a beautiful night. How about this sight that we're seeing here? This it, is something it's else. It's a beautiful it? procession. It's a procession based on strength. Yeah, what's your name, sir? My name's Jonathan. This is my beautiful wife, Kelly. Hello, beautiful wife, Kelly. How you doing? Why did you guys come out here tonight to experience this? Because it's a it's a procession based on strength that's rooted in love. And it's a, it's a love that's deeper than all of us. It's larger than I am in my military service. It's larger than our bond, but it also enriches our bond together. And it's something that larger than the city and larger than everyone that surrounds us. Now, I'm a reporter, so I notice little <laughs> things. And you talk about love, and I love the fact that you guys are out here holding hands, being here together, showing your strength as a couple. It's really special. And I also noticed that you talked about the fact that you are a member of the military. And so, you know, we're telling the story of the gospel that does talk about Jesus dying for all of our sins. But we definitely have to give a big thank you to you because you all put no, your lives you. on the line every single day for our freedom, and we appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. That's more than any thanks you need to give. Oh, thank well, you. you never, no, no. We appreciate you. You guys, go back and join the procession, okay? We appreciate you. You know, we've been seeing Trisha Yearwood sing some amazing. Oh, watch out, honey, because we've got some folks coming through here. And, and, and I wanted to talk to you, Aikisha, we, I met you earlier tonight, and you decided to join this procession for a very special reason, because when we're telling this story, we're also chronicling the very special relationship of a mother and son. Exactly. And I know you are dealing with a really personal issue where you also lost your son to That's senseless correct. violence. That's correct. Why did you decide to come out here and join these folks tonight? What is this doing for you? Um, for me, this means justice, peace, and healing the three things that I'm having faith in God and Jesus for, that he will bring justice, peace, and healing for my son, Keyshawn Anthony Bell, who was senselessly murdered March 21st, 2013, which will be three years tomorrow. Three years tomorrow, he's a teenager, correct? Yes, he was a teenager at the time, yes. You know, I, want, I wanted to ask you too, what is the status of this? I mean, has he, has what's, what's going on with the case right now? Um, unfortunately, no one has been arrested for it, but it's still an ongoing case. And my faith is in God, is in Jesus, and we will get that justice. We will get answers for him. Well, I hope this can be some healing for you. Thank you, Aikisha. I appreciate it. Now, Tyler, once again, we are in the French Quarter, and you know this city. You know anything can happen here, and it definitely is. I'm going to send this back to you because I'm going to go catch up with the perception. We're about a half, we're about halfway done, halfway through to you, so we got a little bit ways to go. Slow and steady, but we're going to get there. Thank you, Michelle. I have never seen anything across going down Bourbon Street. I tell you, I have never seen anything like that. We are looking forward to seeing you here soon. Now, moments ago, Jesus stunned his disciples when he revealed that one of them would soon betray him. Well, we all know who that is. Judas plans to lead authorities to Jesus. They want to charge Jesus with blasphemy and for inciting civil unrest. Judas sells out his friend and his mentor for just a few thousand dollars. But before he does that, Judas must confront the turmoil in his own soul. Open doors leading you down into my core where I've become so numb without a soul, my spirit sleeping somewhere cold until you find that there.
Wow, I believe he's in turmoil. History portrays Judas as the epitome of evil. Did he do it only for the money? Did he become jealous that Jesus confided more in Peter than in him? We don't honestly know. But what we do know is that Judas would soon regret his decision. Jesus and his friends are now in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus plans to prepare them for what's coming, knowing that his friend Peter is there by his side, but he also knows that Judas is betraying him at that very moment. And he also knows that his death is very near. Now, according to the Bible, Jesus is by now in so much agony that he actually sweats blood. But what sustains Jesus is his deep belief that his sacrifice is not for himself, but for the salvation of all mankind. Sit here while I go over there and pray. The sorrow of my heart. It's so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch with me. need a sign to let me know you're here all of these lines are being crossed over the atmosphere i need to know that things are gonna look up because i feel i'm drowning in a sea spilled from a cup and there is no place safe and no safe place to put my head And I can feel the world shake from the words that I said And I, call it Take this cup of suffering from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. I won't give 
give up if you don't give up I won't give up if you don't give up oh I won't give up if you don't give up no I won't give up if you don't give up I need a sign to help me This cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it. Your will be done. that you were not able to keep watch with me for even one hour. Keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He won't give up, so don't you give up. And when we return, Mary senses that her son's fate is rapidly unfolding. We'll be right back for more of The Passion. We are live in New Orleans, and this is The Passion. When, <laughs> when we left you, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, contemplating his impending fate. And now, at the same moment, his mother, Mary, she feels great sadness and fear for the future of her son. Some even fall to the earth, and we 
And so we have reached a crucial moment in our story. Jesus and his disciples have taken refuge in a garden. Jesus is contemplating what is to come as Judas approaches him. Get up. Let's go. Look. This is the man who has betrayed me. I will never leave you, even though all the rest do. I tell you that before the rooster crows twice tonight, you will say three times you do not know me. Peace be with you, teacher. Be quick about it, my friend. It is with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man. When the days are cold and the cards are fold and the saints we see are all made of gold. When your dreams are failing, the ones we hail are the worst of all and the bloods run stale. I want to hide the truth, I want to shelter you, but with the beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. No matter what we breed, we still are made of greed. This is my kingdom come, this is my kingdom come. of all when the lights fade out all the sinners crawl so they took your grave and the masquerade will come calling out at the mess you made don't wanna let you down but I am hell bound though this is all for you don't wanna hide the truth no matter what we breed, we still are made of greed. This is my kingdom come. This is my kingdom come. When you feel my heat, look into my eyes. It's where my demons hide. It's where my demons hide. Don't get too close. It's dark inside. It's where my demons I need to let you go Your eyes, they shine so bright I want to save that light I can't escape them now Unless you show me how When you
This crowd is amazing. This is The Passion, and we're coming to you live from New Orleans. When we, when we last saw the chaos that was going on, it was around Jesus' arrest. And this has terrified the disciples, especially Peter, who now believes that every eye in this city is accusing him. Hey, were you with Jesus of Nazareth? I don't know what you're talking about. Of Jesus of Nazareth. I swear I don't know that man. But I continue learning. I never meant to do those things to you. And so I have to say before. down there. You were with Jesus of Nazareth. Look, I swear I'm telling you the truth. And may God punish me if I'm not. I do not know that man. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself. Save us. Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. I promise you that today you will be in heaven with me. And uh, now our procession has been building in size and emotion throughout the evening. It has reached another historical location in this great city of ours, which is New Orleans. Michelle, share with us what's going on there. Well, Tyler, I have to.
to tell you, you know, you just missed because we are now in Jackson Square. This is, of course, one of the great public spaces in the city, and I wish you could be out here and see this with us. Folks are lined up to watch this procession of the cross come through the city here. You know, we've got people of all different nationalities, beliefs, backgrounds out here. Johnny. We've got some families, too. I met this family Johnny, earlier Johnny, tonight. I want to introduce you to the Amar family. How are you? How you doing, Derek? You're doing good? I love the fact that your whole family is out here with you. That's one of the things that really drew me to you guys. You have your wife and both of your kids. Why did you all decide to come out here tonight? So this has been amazing, and the reason why it's so close to me is mm -hmm. it helped me to honor my parents who I lost at a young age. Mm -hmm. My dad died of a heart attack when I was one. My mother, she lost her battle to cancer when I was 10. And it was her love for Jesus that made me, even during our dying days, that made me want to love Jesus also. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was Christ yeah. that gave me the hope even in a situation that seemed hopeless. And it's his, it was his love and protection that's just been... You know, I can tell this is very emotional yes. for you. So I'm going to hold your hand because your yes. wife's yes. holding one hand. I'm going to hold the other hand, okay? Yes. All right, you know, I was telling you that I love the fact that your family is here with you. Yes. Your son's here with you. I know you're a little camera shot. Tell me your name, son. My name's Gabe. Gabe, tell me what it means to you to just be out here with your family. So surreal because we've just always been brought up to, you know, family is what's important to us. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing to be here with him. Dad's my role model. Always looked up to him my whole life. Okay, don't make me cry. <laughs> don't make me cry. That's wonderful to Great hear. to be out here. I love these Absolutely. guys. I don't want to be anywhere else. Okay, you are going to make me cry. You all, thank you very much for being out here tonight. I appreciate you. So when we come back, if I can get through this, Mary will give an emotional tribute to her son in a song, You'll Never Walk Alone. We'll be right back. procession has been working its way from the Superdome through the streets of this story city and I can tell you I have been with them every single step of the way. Now as we get nearer to Waldenburg Park and the events on the main stage, the energy, the emotion that's been building among those who have traveled here to share their personal stories with us and also to just simply be a part of the passion, it has been stunning. Tyler. Thank you, Nichelle, and we will look forward to seeing you here very, very soon. We already do. Now, moments ago, we saw Jesus hauled away by the authorities. His betrayer, Judas, has disappeared into the night. His disciples went into hiding. And his close friend, Peter, fearful of arrest, he's dodged accusing eyes. Words of Jesus' arrest has spread all over the city. Mary now knows that her son is in grave danger, and she reaches out to him with her powerful voice. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of love.
Welcome back to The Passion and a pivotal moment in our story, the trial of Jesus. Now, while many of us, I hope that we aspire to be more like Jesus, loving to everyone, honest, courageous, and prepared to suffer for our friends, even to die for them. And I know that that's a very tall order, but if I look in the mirror and I challenge myself with those issues, I'm in for quite the conversation, I can assure you. How about you? Certainly when faced with difficult times, it's easier to just wash your hands in innocence, as Pontius Pilate so famously did. Here's the man. It was your own people and here? the chief priest who've handed you over to me. I've heard you are misleading your people. You are telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor. I've even heard you're claiming to be a messiah. A king? Tell me. Are you the king of the Jews? You say I am. Are you the king of the Jews? You say I am a king. I was born and came to the world for this one purpose. To speak the truth. Those that belong to the truth, listen to me. What is truth? The truth is I have the power to set you free. Every year at Passover, I free one prisoner the people ask for. You have brought this man to me? Now I've examined him in your presence and have not found him guilty of any of the crimes that you have accused him of. There is nothing this man has done to deserve death. So tell me, which one do you want me to set free for you? Barabbas, murderer, or Jesus, so-called Messiah? It is clear the people want me to release Barabbas. Set him free. Out of the ruins, out from the wreckage. Can't make the same mistake this time We are the children The last generation We are the ones they left behind And I wonder when I am Living under the fear Till nothing else remains
What then shall I do with Jesus, called the Messiah? Silence. I find no reason to condemn this man. Yet, a good governor befriends his people. I shall do as you say. Take him away. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. The tears are filling up their glasses, no expression. No expression. Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. And I find it kinda funny, I find it kinda sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you. I find it hard to take When people run in circles It's a very, very bad world Children win for the day They feel good Happy birthday Happy birthday and I feel the way that every child should sit and listen, sit and listen. And I find it kind of fun, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell.
when we return a mother's emotional farewell to her son. This is The Passion, and I welcome you back to our story. Jesus has been condemned to death, and Pilate has pronounced his fate. Now, in the modern world, we certainly are horrified to see innocent people put to death, but sadly, it's all too familiar to us. What's happening to Jesus in these moments, it's beneath humanity, but his suffering, it's very real. I'll tell you what they did to him. See, a victim is stretched out on top of a wooden cross. Seven inch nails are inserted through the wrist bone. Then they turned his legs sideways and a single spike was hammered into both ankles. Then they raised the cross. Now, when Jesus puts pressure on the nail in his ankles, He's able to lift himself up just enough to gasp for air, but that causes incredible pain. In the end, he won't have the strength left in his legs or his arms to lift himself to be able to breathe. The cause of death, suffocation. Helps me sleep tonight. Maybe it can't stop tomorrow from stealing all my time. And I am here still waiting, though I still have my doubts. I am damaged at best, like you've already figured out. I'm falling. still be
This crowd has been amazing. Welcome back to New Orleans, where we have been coming to you live on this Sunday, a week before Easter, sharing the story of the Passion. Now, when we last left you, Jesus was condemned in a sham trial, and he then died on the cross. Jesus' suffering, his suffering was over. However, and I love when there's a however in a story. His death fulfilled the prophecy of the scriptures. And Jesus' faith in his heavenly Father, in God, gave him the strength to sacrifice himself for the forgiveness of all of our sins. That act, that one act of faith and love was soon to change history. You see, the Romans had heard whispers and rumors that Jesus predicted that he would rise again after he died. So let me tell you what Pontius Pilate did. He so famously assigned a centurion and a detail of guards to oversee his burial. The body was wrapped in a linen shroud. Then it was placed inside of an impenetrable tomb. And then they sealed it with the biggest rock that they could find. They didn't want him to get out, y'all. The guards remained at that tomb around the clock. But three days later, oh. Good God. three days later, something happened that has been talked about for more than 2,000 years. I just want to say what you believe is, of course, that is up to you. But for millions of us, then and now, what happens, it summons feelings of deep faith, a promise fulfilled, and our personal salvation. Now, certainly a scientific approach to these kind of matters, it says that we should see first and then only believe. And that's fair enough for some people. But we do know that Jesus offered his vision of another world, a world in which everyone is treated justly, a world without suffering, a world without death, a world without end. This is why for many of us, including myself, the story of the passion inspires yet another approach, to first believe, and only then can you truly see. Unconditional. Unconditionally, I will love you unconditionally. There is no fear now. Let go and just be free. I will love you unconditionally. Just as you are to me, don't need apologies. Know that you are unworthy. I'll take your bad days with your good. Walk through the storm, my word. I do it all because I love you. Same for me. 
I gotta say, it's been a privilege sharing the story of the passion with you tonight. And I wanna thank this wonderful, all of these wonderful performers who gave us their voices and their hearts. I also wanna thank you, New Orleans, for being such an amazing audience. Thank you so much. Listen, no matter what you believe, surely love for our fellow man is a message that we all can share. Now let's close the show with my friend Yolanda Adams and the world-famous Preservation Hall Brass Band performing when the Saints go marching in. Yeah.